Well, this appropriately is the presidential palace in Estonia, in the capital Tallinn, where I'm speaking uh, this coming weekend. And uh, like all over the world today, uh, the conversations here have been about the happenings in the United States and another presidential palace, if you like, called the White House and who is the new president. And there are many ways of looking at this uh, result today. One is that more than 300 million people in America were given the choice, in my view anyway, between a catastrophe and a disaster. And that says something massive about the nature of the political system that claims that it represents the interests uh, of the people and the choices of the people. It's not difficult to manipulate choice if you control what those choices are going to be. And in this case, it was Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump. Uh, if we call uh, Clinton, I think appropriately, the catastrophe, then uh, America has dodged a bullet in that sense today, um, and literally so, because one thing's for sure, that if Clinton had have won the presidency, then America and the Western world was almost certainly going to war with Russia. That might still happen, but it was a certainty if she'd have come to power. And this is what the demonization of, um, of Russia and the build-up of uh, forces um, along the Russian border, NATO forces, has been all about. Uh, instead, a majority of those that voted um, have chosen uh, Donald Trump. And the question is why? And there are some positive expressions of that, even though um, I think that uh, Trump will be a disaster. And I think that those that have put their faith in Trump are going to be deeply disappointed with what happens um, during his, uh, his time in the White House. However, there are some positive things about this, um, which reflect something that's happening and I, I'm seeing it on this world tour um, all over the world and we saw it with Brexit in the United Kingdom and that is a change a very o obvious change in increasing uh, swathes of the collective human psyche which is looking at the world anew and rejecting the political establishment now, I don't think for a second that Donald Trump is an outsider, uh, but that um, is irrelevant to the fact that he was perceived by vast numbers of people to be an outsider, to be someone who was challenging the establishment, who was, uh, in the phrase that was or so often used, who was draining the swamp. So to look at why this result happened, we need to look at perceptions because from perceptions come actions like how you vote so we had the perception and it was an absolutely correct one quite obviously and demonstrably that hillary clinton was establishment to her dna has a um, a whole political career based on corruption manipulation and uh, merciless um, destruction of opponents. I mean, Bernie Sanders, I rest my case. And therefore, she was always going to be a really, really difficult sell. And if she had have been uh, against uh, almost uh, anyone except Donald Trump um, in terms of um, a candidate that people uh, saw as... Um, in any way positive, then uh, she would have lost by an even greater margin. So on one side, you've got the perception of Clinton as an establishment uh, to uh, clone to her core. 
and therefore it was always a difficult sell even in normal times but these are not normal times these are changing times she proved to be an impossible sell when this shift in the psyche is happening where people are rejecting the political class and the political establishment that has dictated the direction of the world and the fine detail of people's lives for so long so it's not so much what Donald Trump is that brought this about it is what so many people perceived him to be which is an outsider of the system and so the the outcome of this election mirrors in terms of I think the motivations behind it what happened with Brexit in the United Kingdom where again there was a massive rejection of the political class and the political establishment um, virtually the entirety of which was urging people with threats of dire consequences uh, to stay uh, in the EU so we we are in changing times and while I I don't think for a minute that Donald Trump is going to deliver what so many people thought he was going to deliver uh, put that aside and look at the reasons for why he attracted so much support yes a significant amount would have been support for Donald Trump because he wasn't Hillary Clinton and they were only given a choice of the two and again a significant part of Clinton's vote which says an even bigger statement about her given the vote she got was because she wasn't Donald Trump it was an extraordinary almost culmination of this political stitch up that um, the motivation of so many was to um, vote against uh, the person they like the least however it's also an expression of this gathering and ever gathering rejection of the political establishment which um, Trump was perceived to be um, a vehicle for expressing where does it go from here well it depends where Donald Trump goes from here and how much uh, he himself becomes in office just another clone of uh, the political establishment and I, I think people are going to be disappointed and I hope that um, should that happen that people will go on to the next stage of this awakening and that's to realize that the political system itself no matter how you perceive the person you put in office to be is the problem the way uh, society is structured the way it is uh, dictated to by the, the the hidden hand the hidden networks that ultimately control these people whether they're Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton or ever else and that we have to go to the next stage of the awakening to the world and realize that it's not the political system that's going to change anything it's the vast majority ceasing to cooperate with the actions of the few and the dictates of the few whether they are one party or the other party whether they are Clinton or Trump or Bush or Obama or whoever because the few what's called the political class political establishment financial class financial establishment can only dictate to the vast majority because the vast majority cooperate with the diktats and the laws imposed by the few when we stop cooperating with laws that are unjust with laws that are simply designed to take our freedoms away that are designed to control our lives and what we can do and what we can't do in terms of uh, free choice and free thought when we stop cooperating with them and say we're not doing it 
No, we're not abiding by that. We're not abiding by that. We're not going to let you uh, uh, build a prison and, 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 and we put the bricks together, thank you very much. We're not doing it. If someone comes out of the White House, Clinton or Trump or anybody else, or out of Downing Street, and said, we've had a meeting and we've decided that this is what's going to happen, it only happens if people, the vast majority, say, well, we, we, we better do it. It's the law. Well, that means whoever, the tiny few, that dictate the laws, no matter what they may be, impose their will on the vast majority. This is the next stage of awakening to how the world works. Not seeing some person as uh, an outsider who's going to come and change everything. I think we're going to see uh, um, in, in coming months uh, that that is not the case. Um, in terms of um, what people think will happen. But to realize that the only way to stop the few imposing their will on the many is for the many to stop cooperating with the few and the dictates and the, uh, the laws, the rules and regulations of the few where they are specifically designed to destroy free thought, free uh, expression and freedom of choice. So... Uh, while, um, you know, I think, like I say, people are going to be disappointed with what follows on. This is another um, significant expression that people have had enough. Um, it's like a, a primal scream, a, a, a cry for help, a scream of frustration that was expressed through this vote for Trump. Uh, a scream of frustration at having no one listen to, to you having uh, no one uh, think about your interests when they're stitching up the world. And that's a good thing. Uh, but there are many stages, I would suggest, of this to go yet. And one of them is that we don't think that any uh, person through the political system is going to change the world uh, for the better because um, we have to do that. And we have to do that together.